which of the fractions is the smallest? What I'd like to do is convert them to decimals, and it'll be a little bit more obvious, I think. So you have 0 0.6 for that one. That is 0 0.75. This one is uh, about 0 0.83. That one is 0 0.62. And um, this one is 0 0.9. So when you look at uh, these, sorry, this is about 0 0.66 to two decimal places. Obviously, we're going to need two decimal places, so put a zero there. So now we can compare them very easily, and you can see that the smallest is this one, 5 over 8. The graph to the right shows the number of students in Mrs. Gupta's class that have their birthday in 2016 on each day of the week. If 25% of the students in the class have their birthday on a day that begins with the letter T, how many of the students in the class have their birthday in 2016 on a Tuesday? So we looking at uh, Thursday and Tuesday, right? The days that begin with the letter T. And then Thursday looks like it's 2. And then Tuesday we don't know, so we'll call it X. So that means that 2 plus X over the, I believe the total is going to be that 25%. So 1 over 4 if you make it into a fraction. And the total is what? 4, 4, X, uh, 2, 2, 8, and 6, right? So 4 plus 4 plus X plus 2 plus 2 plus 8 plus 6. So that's the algebra. So uh, pretty straightforward. So just cross multiply. 2 plus X times 4 is going to be that whole sum there, which I believe is 26 plus X. And then that's going to be 8 plus 4X is 26 plus X. So that's going to be 3X is 18, and therefore X is 6. Pete sets up 12 hurdles for a race that is 600 meters long, the distance between the starting line and the first hurdle is 50 meters. The distance between the last hurdle and the finishing line is 55 meters. The distance between each pair of consecutive hurdles is D. What is the value of D? So let's set this up carefully here. Uh, we've got, uh, how many are there? Uh, 12 hurdles, so let me see if I can fit them in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I fit them in. And then the whole distance is 600, okay, 600 meters. And the distance between the starting line, so this is the starting line, the first hurdle is 50. And the distance between the last hurdle and the finish line, this is the finish line, is 55. And then the 12 hurdles... Uh, the distance between each pair of them is D. Okay, so I got it. D, D, D. So uh, the most important thing is to make sure you set this up properly. And I think this does. So that makes the equation 12D plus 50 plus 55 is equal to 600. And therefore 12... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't think it's 12D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 D. Ah, good thing I, I caught that. So 11 D would be 600 minus 105, which is 495, and therefore D is going to be 45. So make sure you get this right, and don't make the mistake that I was about to make. Dinah has a calculating machine uh, labeled F that takes one number as an input and calculates an output. The machine F calculates its output by multiplying its input by 2 and then subtracting 3. For example, if Dinah inputs 2.16 into F, the output is 1.32. If Dinah inputs a number X into F, she gets a first output, which is which she then inputs back into F to obtain a second output, which is minus 35. What is the value of X? So f at x, according to basically their explanation, is 2x minus 3. And they're basically saying, what is f at, f at x? That is the interpretation 
of their explanation and they're saying that's minus 35 and they're saying solve for x okay let's do this so f at x is 2x minus 3 that's minus 35 and then we're going to plug this back into this guy so it'd be 2 times 2x minus 3 minus 3 and I think that completes the algebra and now we just have to solve it so 4x minus 6 minus 3 is minus 35 so that means 4x is equal to minus 35 plus 9 uh, so that's going to be minus 26 and therefore x would be minus 26 over 4 or minus 6.5 In the diagram, P and Q start at positions shown and point X is fixed on the circle. Initially, the shortest distance along the circumference from P to X is 8, from Q to X is 16, and from P to Q is 16, as shown. P and Q move around the circle in opposite directions as indicated by the arrows. P moves at 3 meters per second, Q moves at 3.5 meters per second. If P and Q begin moving at the same time, after how many seconds do P and Q meet at X for the second time? All right, so as always, the standard formula, speed is equal to distance over time, or any variation such as time is equal to distance over speed will be used to calculate all of this. And the speed for P is 3 meters per second, and the speed for Q, these are the speeds, uh, is 3.5 meters per second. So I think we're going to have to make a table I believe yeah so we're gonna have to have P and then Q let me move this up I'm gonna need a little bit more space here and then what will the table be distance and time I guess so distance and time and I think what they're asking for is the second time they meet so we are probably gonna have to do uh, a few calculations, hopefully not too many. So let's see what we get. Okay, so the first distance from P to X is 8. And then the second distance would be when it makes another full uh, rotation, which would be 16, 16, and 8, which is 40. So the next one would be 8 plus 40, which is 48. And then I think you just keep adding 40. So 88, 128, and so on, right? 168. Now I have no idea when they're going to meet for the second time because they're saying yeah second time but uh, hopefully it, it's not too long let me just write a few more uh, 288 328 I'll write it as until I run out of space here which is I guess right here and now I don't have any more space so hopefully it will happen within that okay the time the time you're going to uh, use what uh, this one, right? D over S, so distance over speed. So the first one would be, of course, 8 over 3. So uh, that would be 2.6. The second one would be this 48 over 3, which I believe is 16, and so on. So let me just fill them in, and let's see what we get here. 69.3, Yeah. Okay, so now what we're asking for is the same story, but this time for Q. But Q is a little bit different. Q, its first uh, distance from Q to X is actually 16. If you look at the diagram, you'll see that. And then you just keep adding 40 because the, the rotation one all the way around is the same. So, you know, 56, 96, and so on. Uh, 136, 176, uh, 216, 256, 296, 336, 376, and 416. Okay, let me, let me just make sure that I align them properly to make the comparison. Yeah, I, okay, I, I did a pretty good job there. Okay, now same thing, the times. Okay, so the times, uh, same thing, would be 16 divided by 3.5 this time. So 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57, 4.57
and then 56 divided by 3.5, which is 16. Okay, so now I'm going to stop for a second because this is the first time that they meet. See, the times are equal. When the times are equal is when they're actually meeting. Um, so I guess we have to find this the next time that the times are equal. Okay, so you just keep calculating those times and see if they match any of the times on the other side. So 38.5, 50.2, 61.7, 73.1, 84.5, 96, and that 96 matches. Yeah, that 96 matches this guy right here. Okay, so let's make sense of this. Uh, and after how many seconds? Okay, th I guess that's pretty much all they're asking. Well, the answer is 96 seconds. So after they meet for the first time after 16 seconds, they meet for the second time after 96 seconds. A line has equation y equals x, kx, where k is not 0 and k is not equal to negative 1. The line is reflected in the line with the equation x plus y is 1. Determine the slope and the y-intercept of the resulting line in terms of k. Let's uh, draw a diagram and see if I can explain this. So here we have a basic um, graph, and then we're going to have to somehow plot y equals kx. And y equals, I'm going to, this equation, I'm going to put it into y equals format, so it'll be minus x plus 1. Okay, y equals kx, I obviously don't know what k is, so um, I'm not really sure how to draw that line. But one thing's for sure, well, I just, I don't even know if k is positive or negative, so, hmm, I don't have any idea how to draw it. So what I'm going to do is just guess, because I'm just trying to illustrate so I'm just going to kind of say that it's uh, something like this, something like that, okay? That's this guy right here, y equals kx. And then the y equals minus x plus 1, okay, that one for sure we know what we can uh, draw. And we can put in x and y intercepts, uh, be 1 and 1. So that's going to be like this. So that's going to be like that. Okay, not the straightest lines in the world, but you get an idea. Now what they're saying is that these lines are going to be reflected. Uh, well, this line right here, I probably should have used a different color. Let me just use a green there. That line is going to be reflected in the black line. And then they're saying, what is the you know slope and y-intercept of the resulting line? Okay. N so before, uh, let me see, before I get into a bunch of Ks and all that abstract stuff, which might be a bit confusing, let me do it with numbers. And if I do it with numbers, it might make a little bit more sense to you. And you might be able to understand it. And then I'll go back to the case. So I'm going to draw the same line, which is this guy right here. And I'm just going to draw something like uh, some imaginary line like that or whatever, right? And really what I'm just trying to do is illustrate the concept. If a line, ref if this green line is reflecting the black line, that means that it's going to, uh, let me use a different color, let me use um, red, let's say. The line will kind of be, um, it'll be kind of like this. This will sort of be the reflection of this segment. So this, this segment right here is reflected in the red. Okay, so does that, does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay, so then where do we proceed from there? Well, we, we can choose a point on that line, and we choose a point on this line. And if you were to draw a line, dashed line, directly to the black line, they would be equidistant. Now that, that basically means that they would be the same. So if I were to draw, say, a line like that, the distance from here to here, if you call that D, it would be the same as the distance from there to there. Does that make sense? So that is the concept. Now I'm, I'm going to continue with some numbers to kind of illustrate how we would figure it out. And let's say uh, this point here was 7, 5. Okay? And let's say this point here was, I don't know, 4, 2. The, not drawn to scale, but you guys understand. I can then figure out what this point is. How? Well, think about it. 
to go from 7.5 to 4.2, we went, uh, we went three the, to the left. So three to the left. And then we went down by three also, I guess. So that's how you'd figure out this coordinate. From here, you'd go three to the left, which I believe would put you at one. And then you go down three from two, which would put you at negative one. So you see how I did that? And I did it with numbers to kind of make you understand it a little bit better. But now I don't have any numbers up here. I just have Ks and all that. So we're going to have to do it with Ks. Okay. So let's go and do it with Ks. So the first step, I think, is going to be to find this intersection point, which is fairly straightforward. Kx is equal to minus x plus 1, like that. Okay. And therefore... Um, kx plus x is 1, and therefore x would be equal to 1 over k plus 1. So this point has a, this point right here, the intersection point of those two lines, has the x coordinate 1 over k plus 1. And then to get the y coordinate, uh, you just sub it into either one of those. If you sub it into there, you would get k over k plus 1. All right, so that's the first step. And that's a pretty decent step, I think. Okay, so now, where do I go from here? I think I'm going to need to force myself to pick a point. Because otherwise, I, I don't think it'll, it'll be too abstract. If that's 1 and that's 1, why don't I go ahead and choose 2 for x, if this is the x-axis. So, ooh, I've run out of space here. So 2 would be uh, somewhere... Somewhere up here, I think. Yeah, somewhere up here. Uh, not, not the best uh, drawing diagram, but somewhere up there, right? That red dot that I just wrote. So the, the, if x equals 2, that's going to help me a little bit. I, I would like to use a number because otherwise I don't think I'll be able to do this. Okay, so if x equals 2, that means this equation right here would be y is equal to 2k, correct? So that dot up there has the coordinates 2 and 2k. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. So I've so far figured out that point and this point being this and this. You see where I'm going with this here? Hopefully you can follow. All right, so now what I will definitely need is an equation. Now I'm trying to think which equation here. The equation of something. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to need an equation of a line, but first got to draw that line. And drawing that line, oh boy, it's going to be, yeah. Let me see, how, how am I going to even do this here? I think this, huh. Okay, so I've got to first, I've got to draw the reflection. Yeah, I've got to draw the reflection. Just like how I drew the re reflection down here in red. You see that line that I drew? I got to draw a reflection of that green line and that black line. So, nah, something like this, probably. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Something like that. Okay, so now, let me, let me see if I can maybe uh, at, le at least attempt to make it a little bit better drawn to scale. Yeah. So now that this is where the line comes in. First, let me just extend this guy a little bit. Okay, now, now I've got to make this, these, this line, the line here that I drew, I've got to do something like that. So let me see if I can make that line without it looking terrible. So something like that. Now this is gonna, this is not gonna be perfectly drawn. So that's pretty decent, I think. So just like how I made it down there. I've got that line there, and then it's got to be equidistant. So this point, whatever it is, I don't know what it is right now, but it's going to be uh, equidistant to that black line. So from here to here, we can call that D, is the same as from here to this line. We can just call that D right there. Just like how I did down there, but this time it's uh, the only difference is that we're not using numbers anymore. We've got these letters.
So now let's begin and try to figure out the equation of a line and which line is that going to be? Well, I think the line that we need to figure out the equation of is this black line, the one that goes from here to here, the ones that uh, connect the basically the reflection points. And that line is perpendicular to the line y is equal to minus x plus 1. So that line, as all lines have, equation of y equals mx plus b, but the slope will be the negative reciprocal of this line, so the negative reciprocal of negative 1 is 1. So y is equal to x plus b. And then to figure out the b, I just have to substitute a point on the line, and I have created a point for myself, and that's 2 and 2k. So when x is 2, y is 2k, so therefore b uh, is this 2k minus 2. So therefore, the equation of the line is y equals x plus 2k minus 2. And that line is the one that goes from there all the way to there. Got it? Okay, so now we will use that to figure out this point right here, that point. So we will be able to, therefore, then use that to figure out this point right here that point okay so uh, how do I do that um, that's going to be intersection of this line and this line right so that means we're going to set um, x plus 2k minus 2 equal to minus x plus 1 right okay and when you do this I'll let you do it you will get x is equal to um, 1.5 uh, minus k, I believe, when you solve all that. And then when you plug it back into, you know, either one of the equations to get y, you'll get y is equal to uh, minus 0 0.5 plus k. So that means this point right here is 1.5 minus k for the x-coordinate. So this point... And then the y-coordinate is minus 0 0.5 plus k. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So now, think about it. I got this guy up here. And I've got this guy right here. This, this one. So I can then figure out how many you know I'm going down and how many I'm going left. But... In this example, it was easy. I could just do it in my head. 7 minus 4 is 3, and 5 minus 2 is 3. But this time, I've got to do it with numbers. I've got to do 2 minus 1.5 minus k. You see what I'm saying? So it's not as straightforward, but we can do it. So first, let's figure out 2 minus the 1.5 minus k, which would be plus k, basically. So it would be 0 0.5 plus k. So that's how much you're going left. Here we have 3, but here it's 0 0.5 uh, plus k that we're going left. So I've got to take this guy and then go left. Another 0 0.5 plus k would basically mean subtracting, right? So we've got to take 1.5 minus k and then subtract from it that 0 0.5 minus k. 0 0.5 plus k, but when you subtract it, it becomes minus k. And that's going to give me 1 minus 2k. So that, voila, gives me this coordinate, finally. 1 minus 2k. And then we got to do the exact same thing to get the y-coordinate. So are you going from 2k to this uh, minus uh, 0 0.5 plus k? So same thing, 2k. Um, so we're going to subtract it, so it's going to become plus 0.5. Uh, minus k, and that's going to be 0 0.5 plus k. So then from this guy, we got to go down 0 0.5 plus k. So from minus 0 0.5 plus k, we have to go down. So subtract 0 0.5 minus k. And that's going to give me negative 1. So therefore, this is negative 1. And there we go. Finally, we have what we need to figure out the slope and y-intercept of the resulting line. And the resulting line is this red line right here 
now I'm making it very thick. And now how do we figure out the line's equation and therefore the slope and the y-intercept? We have two points. We have this point and we have this point. And that should be sufficient. So here we go. Let's figure it out. So the two points, let me just write them here. 1 minus 2k, negative 1. That's the first point. And the second point is 1 over k plus 1 and k over k plus 1. And this should be the final step to figuring this out. So now I just have to figure out the equation of a line with those two points. So that shouldn't be too bad. First, let's figure out the slope. As always, all the equations of lines will be in the form y equals mx plus b. So first, let me figure out m, rise over run. So k over k plus 1 minus, uh, minus 1, if I'm not mistaken, and over run 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 minus 2k. All right. Now, I'll let you do all that math. Or I can do it for you. I mean, I guess, uh, what the heck? If I come this far, I might as well just do it all. So we got to put this over, um, uh, you know, common denominator like that. So this is going to be k minus, minus 1 times k plus 1 all over k plus 1. And that's going to be over 1 minus 1 minus 2k times k plus 1 all over k plus 1. So when you invert and multiply, the k's plus 1's will disappear, and you're just going to have k plus k plus 1. And on the bottom, you're going to have 1 minus k plus 1 minus 2k squared minus 2k. OK, so that's going to be 2k plus 1 on the numerator and the denominator. When we collect like terms, I believe it will be uh, the ones will disappear. The 2k, it will become positive 2k and it'll be mm, plus k, I believe. Yeah. And then we factor out a k from the bottom and that would be 2k plus 1. Ah, OK, great. And then that just becomes 1 over k. And that is my m. So my slope is uh, slope is 1 over k. So my slope is 1 over k. That's, I think, part of the uh, answer. And then I think the next one is the y-intercept. So the equation is y equals mx plus b. Well, m I've just figured out was k. OK, and then to, to get b, which is the y-intercept, y-intercept, I would have to plug in a point. So which point do you want to put in? I think this one is a little bit simpler. So let's put in that point. So when x is 1 minus 2k, y is negative 1. All right, this should allow me to solve for b. So let's see here. Uh, this is going to be negative 1 uh, minus 1 minus 2k over k is b. And let's get the common denominator here. And that's going to be minus k minus 1 plus 2k over k. And we're almost done here. So this is going to be, I believe, k minus 1 over k. And that is the y-intercept. So we have completed the question, which says find the slope, which is 1 over k, and find the y-intercept, which is k minus 1 over k.